All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. Max Verstappen takes sprint pole again in Austria. Charles Leclerc with an absolute disaster. SQ3 we shall dive into. But the big story of today, once again, the Verstappen versus Horner drama is back in the Red Bull camp. Not necessarily involving Max, but it's Jos Verstappen saying he's done with Horner. It's kindergarten there internally. All sorts of drama exploding today. And just after this event, Jos Verstappen spotted in the Mercedes hospitality suite, absolutely seeing if there's a possibility for his son to be at that team next season. Very much interested your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. This arguably blows the whole Verstappen Mercedes conversation way out of proportion. But let's talk about some of the Carlos Sainz stuff because apparently he is now going to wait until after Silverstone. That's the latest rumor. He's going to wait after this weekend's, next weekend in Silverstone. Then he is going to make his decision between Williams, Audi, and Alpine has emerged as another option. Haas are looking at Esteban Ocon alongside Oliver Behrman. Ocon is the second option at Audi and Williams. They're looking at Valtteri Bottas us potentially as well. So those are the key names. Sainz, Ocon, Bottas pretty much. They will make up probably what's going to happen over the next few weeks in terms of the driver market moves. Just before we get to the Verstappen stuff, this was really interesting yesterday. The Lewis Hamilton seems to have effectively given up on getting Peter Bonington, Bono, his engineer, over to Ferrari with him. There was a feeling that in terms of guarding leave, like it just wasn't going to be able to happen. Now maybe Bono would join Hamilton in 2026. Who knows? knows if that could be possible but um and what Bono would want to do next but Hamilton apparently reached out to his good friend Sebastian Vettel and asked him about Ricardo Adami of course currently the race engineer for Carlos Sainz so it seems like there is going to be continuity here Vettel said yep he's a good guy I think you should stick with him as it were so it seems like because apparently Brian Bozzi has impressed Charles Leclerc although <laughs> Charles Leclerc wasn't so happy with the results of spring qualifying today looks like there's going to be continuity there so more than likely the Hamilton Bono partnership ends he joins effectively the way that Ferrari are currently operating but I'm not gonna lie they're not operating especially well on the evidence of today bad news for Max is that the power unit from Canada is cooked like it ain't coming back it's broken as it was during the practice sessions for that weekend's Therefore, they will need a penalty. It is expected they're going to take the 10 place penalty at Spa, and I'm sure Max is going to have a great weekend there on the evidence that we've seen over the last couple of years. So, um, not good news for Max, obviously, but I don't really think a 10 place pen, or even if he starts at the back of the field, is going to be the end of the world on the pace that Rebel has had around Spa for the last couple of years, and of course, Max on an individual basis. But this is yet again the Verstappen Horner drama from the Jos Verstappen angle. Now, this is has gone pretty crazy and we saw it a few months ago now Jos Verstappen was making it very clear he wasn't happy with Horner he wanted Horner gone he wanted Max out of there and look people would say Jos take a step back your son's winning championships with the team he's going to win another championship with the team probably next year then who knows about 2026 but we know that Jos and Max are very close we know that Jos Max and Helmut Marko are very close and there's absolutely been a feeling here that Jos Verstappen wants his son to go wants him to go to another team and of course Mercedes want Max as well Max did respond to the rumors around Mercedes yesterday and said look I've got a contract I'm going to drive for Red Bull but he probably could have been a little bit more emphatic in the way that he said it and didn't absolutely rule out the possibility of not fulfilling his contract and then today we get this so Jos and Horner they had all the beef I mean apparently it was you know there was even crazy rumors going around that the woman in question that Horner was sending the text messages to she either was having or had had an affair with Jos Verstappen which is kind of one of the reasons why all of that drama was happening you know who even knows at this point that's just <laughs> allegations in the press shall we say make that very clear but Jos Verstappen was meant to be driving the RB8 at Spielberg for the Legends Parade event David Coulthard will also be driving the RB1s this was confirmed a few days ago and you know look Jos Verstappen he's obviously got connections to Red Bull and he was a Formula 1 driver in the past but um you know he's not connected to Red Bull in quite the same way that a guy like David Coulthard is so there were questions as to whether he should be allowed to do this or not and apparently that ain't happening Jos Verstappen has withdrawn from driving the RB8 at Spielberg for this event 
sent. Jos, now this is from Eric Van Haren, right? So you've got Van Haren, who is effectively the Verstappen mouthpiece, and then you've got this other guy we'll talk about in a second, who is effectively the Horner mouthpiece, you know, within reason. Jos says, I heard from several sources that Christian Horner did everything that he could not to let me drive. Then I thought, say it to my face. I find it very disappointing. So he's basically saying that Horner sabotaged his intent to drive this Formula One car. When approached by Mirror Sport, a Red Bull racing spokesperson denied Verstappen's claim that Horner had done everything in his power to stop him from participating in the event. So, you know, as a Red Bull racing daily say, you can't make this stuff up. He actually then doubles down Jos and says this, I'm completely done with Horner. So I think this was probably translated from the Dutch. Some have translated it as I'm completely done with him. Some translated I've completely finished with him. But um, you know, the message is the same. It is like a kindergarten here. So this follows on from the statement that Jos made a few months ago where he said it's going to fall apart. It's going to be chaos. Red Bull's going to collapse if they keep Horner on. They've kept Horner on. The investigation didn't go anywhere. The tie owners are still back in Christian Horner. So, um, you know, it seemed like Yoss had lost the war, but it seems like, no, he's decided he's got another battle to fight and maybe the war is not over quite yet. So, um, look, Yoss's opinion could not be any more clear. What Max thinks about this, well, I imagine Max feels somewhat caught between a rock and a hard place. You know, in some level, he's got loyalty to Horner. Every that he's done for the team and the fact that he's winning all the championships of the team. But he does have more loyalty, let's be real, to his father and to, you know, probably Helmut Marko based on our understanding. So that's when, you know, Total Wolf's eyes will be lighting up at this stuff happening today. Then there were rumours that Horner apparently offered a handshake to Jos Verstappen, which was not accepted. So, you know, even with all these rumours apparently going behind the scenes, Jos and, and Christian Horner have not made up at all. Then he withdrew from the event. The other guy Guys will still participate. Max Verstappen's future has been massively speculated on, and um, you know we know the rest of the story. But it's this thing again that you know they apparently offered each other. Well, okay, one of the guys offered a handshake, and it was not exactly accepted. Horner then has to come out and talk about this to the media and says, no, there was no veto from my side. And apparently, at least this is Christian Horner's perspective. After hearing that Jos was going to drive this, you know, classic Red Bull from several years ago, he basically reached out to the respective team and said, hey, you know, are we sure? Like, should Jos be driving this? Or apparently he wasn't, like, saying no. He was just kind of inquiring as to the situation. So, you know, make of that what you will. And this is Thomas Maher from Planet F1 who, you know, I wouldn't call him exactly a horn and mouthpiece, but on the stories that have been coming out over the last few months, usually Van Haren will take the Verstappen side and Maher will take the you know, the Horner side. My understanding of the situation is that Red Bull did not seek to have Jos Verstappen pulled out, but Horner did query the organised run with the company itself. So, you know, what do we make of this? What I will say is that, as I say, the eyes of Toto Wolf will be lighting up about the situation. Over the last few days, Toto, the CEO of Mercedes, have made it very clear, increasingly clear, they would love to have Max drive their car next year. Max yesterday said, Sorry, Toto, it ain't going to happen. But he didn't quite use those words and didn't entirely rule it out. And that's what Toto says. I wasn't there, but I don't think that he clearly said yes, that he'll drive for Ripple, which I think I would say, if you guys watch yesterday's video, is quite possibly true. Then Max wasn't absolutely as explicit as potentially he could have been. And then Christian Horner, I mean, man, the beef is incredible, isn't it? Like, you got to love Formula 1 for stuff like this. The on-track action was pretty good today as well, to be fair, but the off-track stuff was even better, I thought. Horner then hits back and says, if Mercedes wants to have a Verstappen in the car next year, then Jos might be available. So this is like, is crazy from a couple of angles, right? Because not only is he having a dig at Wolf and, and Mercedes, but he's also having a dig at Jos, isn't he, right? Because he's like, yeah, this Jos guy's trying to drive one of my cars and, uh, you know, my driver really is Max Verstappen. Like, yeah, Jos, get out of it type thing. Or go drive for Mercedes. I don't want you around anymore. And I can't imagine Yoss is happy about hearing a comment like this. And I can't imagine Max is happy either. I like, you know, the people that he respects, admires, look up to, have done a lot for his career, whatever you want to say, and have contributed massively to his success. You know, they're fighting big time at the top of the organization. And I can't imagine that Max is happy about this situation. There's no doubt that if Max was to go to Mercedes you know, in some elements, there would be less drama. Red Bull has always kind of been behind the scenes, an interesting organisation. And I'm not saying Mercedes isn't necessarily. I think there would be some fascinating dynamics with George Russell as a potential teammate. But I will say that Jos Verstappen, Max Verstappen, Helmut Marko, whatever, might feel like Mercedes is 
a better team environment, assuming that they have the car they want to put together for 2026. There was also an interesting quote that Horner said that makes me feel like he is a bit concerned about Red Bull's prospects in 2026, that Max Verstappen is obviously thinking about. And then the great thing was that Jos Verstappen, having gone through all this drama, was then spotted with a couple of the Mercedes boys. This is definitely Bradley Lord on the right-hand side. And Jos apparently then went into their hospitality. And um, here's Scott Mitchell Marm actually at the race, who says, me after hearing Horner's Jos Verstappen comments in the press conference and then seeing Jos go into Mercedes hospitality and here he is with a popcorn. So yeah, lots happening there. This was the comment I wanted to mention as well though because Horner of course responding to the idea of Verstappen going to Mercedes by saying the driver who has created all the movement in the market, of course Lewis Hamilton, had all the information about the engines and 2026 regulations and chose to leave Mercedes. So which is true, I think there's a bit more to it than that. Hamilton feeling like, you know what, Mercedes, they might get it right for 2026 but I want to drive for Ferrari and they probably have an equally good chance and Ferrari were offering him you know the world the moon and the stars Mercedes weren't offering him what he wanted in terms of the ambassadorial relationship and all these other things so you know I think Hamilton left on part due to performance but also just to the reason of okay look if I get the eighth at Ferrari that's legendary and if I don't then you know I gotta drive the you know the most famous kind Formula One before I retired so these comments from Horner make me think that he's you know trying to tell Max hey look don't go to Mercedes Max because Hamilton and left them for a good reason. But, you know, maybe that strikes me as Horn being a bit concerned that it's actually a possibility. And especially if stuff like this continues, obviously the Red Bull has had a few problems over the last few rounds. This was another one here in practice today when the engine conked out. It looked like, oh my God, wow, Honda, the engines, you know, they're struggling all of a sudden. Red Bull's pace didn't look great initially, although that swiftly changed because Max managed to once again get the best out of the car today. But yeah, red flag, Max was just rolling backward down the track because basically there was some sort of software issue. They were able to reset the car and they were okay again. So, you know, it went from, oh my God, wow, like this is going to be a really awful day for Max Verstappen, a Red Bull, to Max red flags it. And then 15 minutes later, six at P1 by about three tenths of a second. So yeah, it was one of those classic days where it looks like for half a second, Max is not going to be winning. And then um, Max wins, which is basically how Formula One works at the moment. Before we talk sprint qualifying, because of course the sprint weekends, sprint quality today, sprint tomorrow and Grand Prix quality tomorrow, then the Grand Prix of course on the Sunday. These were the long run data, mostly on the hard tyres and the data was difficult to read into for Red Bull because they didn't do too much of the running but the McLaren, the Mercedes and the Ferrari were all actually very similar in terms of the long run pace. You can actually see it here on the hards. Now Hamilton's laps were slower but that was largely because he'd done so many laps on the hards. He actually set his fastest lap time of the session which is a very competitive lap time on the hard tyres. They were about 10 laps old and very early in the session compared to the others and then he just kept doing laps on those hards for the rest of the, the, rest of the time. So um, it looks to me like Mercedes long run pace is pretty damn good. The problem is they're still missing a trick in qualifying performance as we saw today. Then at the end of the practice session, everyone came out, most drivers came out for some soft tire runs. Norris had a good first sector, then was in the gravel and Max ends up being the fastest in the practice session ahead of Charles Leclerc in third. But again, these gaps here, three, four tenths to the Ferrari is basically what we are seeing right now, which is a mega concern because this is a short track. Like if Ferrari want to say that they're still competitive with Red Bull they need to be within a tenth and a half of max at this track. So sprint qualifying gets underway. Hamilton has a mega moment in turn one on his first lap and on his second lap it was because you've got to run the same tyres. That's the point. You can really get one lap in on the set of medium tyres in SQ1, SQ2 but in SQ3 the tyres are only going to be good enough for one lap. So the eight minutes is kind of pointless for the SQ3 session because they just sit in the garage for the first six minutes of them. But anyway, Hamilton, a big moment for a sector and, um, you know, wasn't good enough. You got that time deleted actually at turn six. Eventually his second run on the used rubber was good enough just... The big story, I'd say, of SQ1, though, was Logan Sargent's, because Alex Albon was out in P19. Sargent got through to SQ2. So, you know, great to see from Logan Sargent's finally putting together a pretty respectable qualifying lap, all things considered. Now, it didn't get much better from there, but he was still pretty respectable today, Sargent. So I thought that was nice to see that finally Sargent gets one over on Albon. Now, I don't know if it's going to count for the record books, just because the Albon-Sargent undefeated qualifying record, I think, just applies 
applies to regular qualifying. So yeah, we'll see if the same thing will happen tomorrow afternoon, I suppose. And during SQ2, this was the situation. So Max clearly had the pace to be leading the way. Half a second again, basically from Sergio Perez. Russell, Piastri, both the Ferraris, they were all kind of in this ballpark of being tenth and a half, two tenths off the pace of Max. SQ3, though, was an absolute banger, and this was the final results there, actually. So it was Norris got through. Perez, again, it was just about good enough in the end for him. Both Alpines, a fair play to them. Again, the big story of this part of qualifying, both Astins gone. Stroll ahead of Alonso again, by the way, becoming a bit of a trend over the last few rounds. Not exactly sure what it is, but um, Alonso is clearly not as comfortable as he would like to be with the way the car has been developed in the bad direction, let's be real, over the last few races. So, yeah, and he's actually been on level terms or even behind Stroll recently, but I don't think it matters much to Alonso. What matters is trying to get it right for next year and certainly the year beyond. Magnus Allout qualifying Hulkenberg was a good result for him actually today in his ambitions to try and maintain that seat for next season. And both Alpines, you know, given the fact that they're losing probably a good couple of tenths here in pure straight line speed performance because their engine isn't very good, they're not even that bad anymore. But this was the major drama of SQ3 was Charles Leclerc. So there was two minutes left. The drivers were coming out. The Mercedes boys went out first because they wanted to make sure they got to the line in time. Charles Leclerc with one minute 15 on the clock. Now the lap here of course is a one minute five second lap. So you've got to get cracking at this point. And Leclerc's car stops. It stalls. He basically goes into anti-stall mode or something and the engine turns off. He then gets it back up and running again. But by the time he gets to the end of the pit lane and down the main straight, he is so far away from getting back to the start line that he has to push so hard. And as Charles is on the radio, what happened, guys? Brian says, we took the anti-stall. Thank you, but anti-stall cannot stop the engine. The engine switched off. So it's still not exactly clear what happened to Leclerc's engine. But um, this is just some classic Ferrari stuff, isn't it? When things, when it rains, it pours, you know, for Ferrari, things start to go badly and all of a sudden it's an absolute shambles and, um, you know, Leclerc's car's breaking down before they ever get there and the funny thing as well was that it actually probably heard Lewis Hamilton's lap because Leclerc was so late on his out lap when he eventually did get going that by the time he got to the final sector Hamilton was right on him which definitely cost Hamilton some downforce in the last couple of corners gave Lewis a bit of a run to the line probably a bit of a toe at the final corner but the two corners turn nine turn ten Hamilton was definitely getting dirty air because like Leclerc was only a, a second or so in front and was pushing really hard to try and get to the line in time he didn't get to the line in time he missed out by like a second and Leclerc did not get there in time to set a lap time so um, an absolute operational disaster from Ferrari they don't even allow Leclerc to set a lap which might have been good enough Hamilton made a mistake at turn three as well which cost him two tenths which was eventually the gap to George Russell but um yeah this was how things looked in the ends Verstappen just pipped Norris by a tenth of a second again he's on pole here again Verstappen is on pole and he's won like every Red Bull Ring Grand Prix for the last several years now a very impressive lap, a 104.6. Norris was just behind. Great to see the track limits as well. The gravel absolutely worked here to ensure the drivers stay where they've got to stay. But Piastri third is a big deal actually for, for the Red Bull guys because, or for the uh, McLaren guys, because they're in position to attack as a team against Verstappen if they get things right tomorrow. And who knows what's going to happen in qualifying tomorrow night as well for the Sunday Grand Prix. Russell was then fourth. Sainz split Hamilton. Leclerc ended up 10th, of course. And then after that, the results were as follows. Perez had an obviously a bit of a stinker. He was ended up P7, and then, you know, both Alpines couldn't get anything going either. I think their, la their outlaps were just compromised. Like, they came out so late, their outlaps were just awful. Like, because even, let's say Leclerc got to the line in time, he was pushing his tyres no end on the lap before to try and get there in time. By the time you get to the line on an outlap going that hard, your tyres are going to be so red hot that you're not going to really be able to get the ideal lap in after that. So those teams messed up pretty big time. That is going to be your grid for tomorrow's sprint race. And, um, yeah, what a disaster for Ferrari. I think that is the key point for today. Yes, there's the Verstappen Mercedes stuff that still continues on, but um, Ferrari, from where they started the year, to be P5, P10, several tenths off the Red Bull and Norris's McLaren in the, you know, Verstappen and Norris respectively, in a track where it's a very short track, right? It's a track they were good at a couple of years ago, slower than Merck. Even Russell said after qualifying that, yeah, like we're faster than Ferrari right now. And then Schalke couldn't set a lap due to the engine problem. It's like, yeah, this is Ferrari heritage right here. 
here, but um, this is also Max Verstappen heritage because this is his record over the last couple of years. Okay, sure, he lost the race in 2022, but um, since then it's not been bad. Very much in Twitter, your thoughts, as always, in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.